Hey everybody, it's Angie and welcome to Hot and Flashy. Today's video is going to be an update to my skincare routine. I haven't done a skincare routine video since last winter and of course it is summer now, just became summer. So happy, my favorite season of the year. My skincare routine doesn't change much from season to season or year to year, but I have swapped out a few things in it lately and you've seen them in separate videos, but I wanted to bring it all together into one video and update the whole thing. So in order to keep this video a little bit more um, short and compact, I'm going to refer you out to some other videos for questions you may have because I know these bring up a lot of questions for people. For example, uh, my morning and evening skincare routine videos from last winter, which those will show how I actually apply things, how much I use, where I put it on my face. I'm going to be talking a lot about ingredients in here, but I'm going to kind of glaze over a lot of the information because I started doing a new ingredient series recently. So if you want in-depth information about scientific studies, why I choose the products I do, uh, how they have to be formulated to actually work in your skin, those are the videos to go to. And then of course I have some older videos on using Retin-A and retinoids and showing my results over five years, how to get started without irritation. No matter what you're looking for, I can guarantee you I have a video on it. So you can also go to my channel. There's a little search box under the magnifying glass and you can just type in whatever you're looking for and videos will pop up. And I've updated my printable skincare routine guide. This is a helpful handy guide for you guys that I provide over on my blog. I'll put the link to this in the information box as well. All right, let's start in with the morning skincare routine. First step is I wash my face. Even though it's clean from the night before, I may have had a hot flash during the night. I probably have some cat fur and dust mites on me, so I want to start fresh every day. I don't use anything that foams or anything that has detergent or anything with a high pH because those just strip your skin and they are not good for your skin. And I know that as we get older, a lot of people have drier skin. So the first thing, if you're using a foaming cleanser, I would swap it out for a non-foaming cleanser. The ones that I use in the morning, are the CeraVe Hydrating Cleanser and the La Roche-Posay Tolerane Hydrating Gentle Cleanser. I have two because I keep one at my vanity and the other one lives in my shower. These are very similar ingredient wise. They both have ceramides and glycerin and they're very moisturizing and gentle on the skin. I use lukewarm water and just my hands to wash my face in the morning. When I pat dry my face, I don't want it to feel tight. I don't want it to feel dry. I want it to feel moisturized and comfortable and that's how it feels using those cleansers. So the next step most mornings is that I use my new face device. This is a microcurrent device and I absolutely love this. I've done lots of videos on this too. I'll try to squeeze the link to that in the information box as well. On the mornings that I use this I do wash my face before I use it so this would be one of those mornings that I'm at my sink. I've just washed my face with the CeraVe and instead of uh, patting my face I just leave the water on there because this needs a conductor to conduct the electricity, the microcurrent through your skin. And so there are gels that you can use with it. Sometimes I just use the water if I'm in a rush. Even if I use a gel, I like to keep the water on my face because that way I can use much less gel. And so in that case, I have two gels that I tend to use. One is the New Face Gel Primer Hydrating Leave-On Gel. And the other one is this one from Target. It's their Up and Up Aloe Vera Gel. I paint the gel on. I do the whole new face routine and while I'm doing that I have my iPad in the window and I watch YouTube videos and I get caught up with all my favorite YouTubers and make my skin uh, it really is amazing like what it does it just lifts and firms in the most subtle and beautiful way I just love it and then when I'm finished whether I'm using the leave-on gel or not I remove the gel because I feel like it makes too thick of a barrier so that my next products aren't gonna sink in so I just splash it with warm water if I feel like there's a little bit of gel left on my face I I will just um, dampen up my Wonder Cloth while I just rub it to make sure I have all the gel off. Then I pat my face dry and I start putting on my serums. And I don't wait for it to dry completely before applying my serums. Skin is much more absorbent when it is slightly damp and I want maximum absorption with my skincare. So I don't wait and I also don't wait between products. And I also want to kind of get a moisture lock. So where I've just had water on my skin, I want some of these things to trap the water 
uh, into my skin and onto the surface of my skin. So in my book, there is no reason to wait between things unless you're having irritation. If you're having irritation, then putting things on a dry face can make them less irritating because of course they don't absorb as effectively. This is what works for me. Obviously, it's not gonna work for everybody. So the order that I apply my serums is generally from the most important one that's gonna do the most for my skin, as well as the lightest weight working my way up to the heaviest. So the first serum that I use is my vitamin C serum. They can help protect your skin from free radicals that are gonna be generated by sunlight and pollution and other things that you're exposed to. So the one that I use currently and have used for five years is the Timeless 20% C plus E plus Ferulic Acid Serum. This is my go-to. I do have a discount code at Timeless if you're interested in purchasing. It's ongoing all the time forever. Another option for the vitamin C serum that I like is May Love the Glow Maker. These are both formulated correctly so that they get into your skin, but they also have a couple of other antioxidants in there that make them eight to 16 times more effective. So these are two of my favorites. I also have a discount code for the May Love. It's for 10% off plus free shipping. And these guys are very, very similar. The differences basically are this one is 20% L-ascorbic acid and this one is 15% L-ascorbic acid. I like the 20%, but I do use these kind of interchangeably. They're both like a watery, clear um, serum, very liquidy. And where vitamin C serums are concerned, where they are going to oxidize probably before you get to the ends of the bottle, don't be stingy with it just like bathe yourself in vitamin C serum. This is the one thing where it's kind of a race with time to use it all up. Everything that I apply, I apply to my face, my neck, my chest, and the backs of my hands. The acids though, like this one, the vitamin C is an acid. I don't put it on my eyelids. I'm careful with it underneath my eyes until my face is acclimated to it. All right, second serum that I apply is my alpha hydroxy acid serum. So the one that I've been using this year is the Ordinary Lactic Acid 5% plus hyaluronic acid. And this is another wonderful little acid serum, very watery, a little bit yellow in color, but that is fine for this. The vitamin C, you want it to be clear. Everything else, if it's yellowy, that is fine. I wouldn't like bathe in the lactic acid like I would with the vitamin C serum. I just do four or five drops of that on my fingertips and apply to all those same places. Then the third serum that I use is, again, from Timeless. This is their Coenzyme Q10 serum. This one contains ubiquinone, which is CoQ10. That is great for aging skin, but it also contains Matrixyl 3000. So in this one, you're getting like two anti-aging active ingredients for the price of one. It also has hyaluronic acid and vitamin E. So this one is chock full of good stuff. This is not an acid, and so this can go on the eyelids and on my lips. Then the next step is a little bit of a moisturizer. In the summer, I don't really find that I need too much moisturizer, so I've been cutting way back on this, but the one that I've been using year in, year out is the CeraVe PM Facial Moisturizer lotion. PM simply means that it doesn't contain sunscreen and I use a separate sunscreen. But if you're someone who is looking to save a little time and cut out a step, the AM version of this is a great product. It does contain a combination chemical and mineral sunscreen, but it does have a high concentration of zinc oxide and it is the bomb. So I love this because it contains niacinamide, ceramides, um, hyaluronic acid, glycerin. It's a wonderful moisturizer, but it's super lightweight and I do do love it for the summertime. All right, the last step in my morning skincare routine and potentially one of the most important steps in the skincare routine is to apply sunscreen every day, which I do. Doesn't matter if it's raining, if I'm not leaving the house, if it's four in the afternoon, if it's winter, it doesn't matter. You need sunscreen every day. Those UVA rays and UVB rays are with you every minute of every day, even if you don't feel hot, even if it's cloudy, they're there and they're damaging your skin. So I use all mineral sunscreen because as I said before, some of my anti-aging active ingredients can be irritating to the skin. The ones that I love the best this year are the Make Prem UV Defense Me Blu-ray Sun Cream SPF 50 plus PA++++. This one is beautiful, leaves no white cast. It's very um, lightweight and fluid, and it works great under makeup. Then my other favorite sunscreens are the Australian Gold Botanical Tinted Face Sunscreen SPF 50. This is fragrance free, it's paraben free, it's reef safe, it's water resistant to 80 minutes. So you can wear this 
on a day when you are dressing up and need to look good because it works so well under makeup, you can also wear this to the beach and it's perfect, especially if you have slightly oily skin because it keeps your skin dry and matte and it like disguises your pores, it's very smoothing, it is just a fantastic sunscreen and the price is right. Then the other one that I really like a lot that actually I like to mix with this is the Hydropeptide Solar Defense SPF 50. The reason I like to mix this is because this is so expensive and where this one can be slightly drying, this one is very moisturizing and does contain other antioxidants so it's a beautiful sunscreen that also works great under makeup. None of these feel greasy, they don't leave a white cast. You gotta like it to wear it and that's the thing. Alright so let's start in with the evening skincare routine. Again this starts with washing my face because I want to get all the makeup off. I have been doing a double cleanse for quite a while. I find that that works best for removing makeup. So I recently finished up a video, The Clean is Clean, where I tested facial cleansers for removing makeup because I don't really want to have a third or fourth product. You know, two is plenty for me to get my face clean, and I wanted to get everything off with just the two products. And I am very happy with the product that I discovered, which is the Clinique Take the Day Off Cleansing Balm. This stuff is awesome. It'll take off all your makeup. You don't need a separate eye makeup remover. You don't need a separate micellar water. You don't need a separate makeup towel removing towelette. So I have this little spoon that is stolen from another product. And if you can get your hands on one of these, this is great. Or use like a tongue depressor or one of those little uh, Italian ice scoops. I just use about this much. So you just rub that around and really massage it in good. And what I love most about it is that, you know, you're massaging your face, but you're not pulling on your skin because it's very oily. And then what you do is you take a handful of water and you apply that to your face and rub it around a little bit more. And that emulsifies with the oil and some of the makeup starts to run away. You can splash it a few times. Then I go in with my Tao Clean Aura Orbital Cleanser. I love this little guy. I got it a couple of years ago. I stopped using the Clairsonic a while ago and I use this instead. And this is a little rotating scrubby brush and I give my face a scrub with that. And when I'm finished, I wash this with hand soap and then I return it to its base, which lives on my counter. It's like a little R2-D2 sitting there waiting for me, but the great thing about this base is it's a sanitizing base. It has blue light and a fan, and so it dries the brush and it keeps it sanitized until the next time. So it doesn't contribute to my breakouts because of course I was having like wrinkles and acne, which is lovely. I hate that. This is another thing I have an ongoing discount code for if you're ever interested in buying one of those. It's for 50% off the price. So that's the first step of my double cleanse. And then the second step is that I want to wash the oil off my face because again, I don't want anything occlusive that is going to be a barrier between my skin cells and the anti-aging topicals that I'm going to put on. So then I just give my face a quick wash with my CeraVe Hydrating Cleanser. I damp in my wonder cloth with some lukewarm water I take this and I just lightly rub the rest of my face a little bit at the eyes do the neck down the chest and my face is now squeaky clean but not stripped and still moisturized and my skin barrier is healthy and intact so it's ready to absorb my anti-aging ingredients and it's also ready to handle the harshness of them without freaking out and making me look older all right so then I just pat dry my face Again, I don't wait till my face is dry to apply my anti-aging uh, creams that are coming up next, but if you are new to them, you might want to wait for your face to dry. For years and years, I've used a toner after I cleanse my face. The one I use is the Thayer's Witch Hazel Toner. This is alcohol-free. I don't want to put anything on my face that is going to be drying, and SD alcohol can be drying to your skin. So I use this one. I absolutely loved it. I feel like it makes my pores a little bit smaller, but I have been using it a lot lately because I also kind of felt like it almost left like a little film on my face. And and again, where I'm into my actives really getting into my skin, I was like, oh, do I really want even a little film of that on my face? So I've kind of stopped using this. Um, you can use it if you want. You can not use it if you don't want. All right, so then the next step is my first treatment, which is my prescription tretinoin cream. Tretinoin is uh, considered the gold standard of the retinoids. I used to use a generic 
tretinoin cream. This was a prescription that I got from my dermatologist. I would have it filled at CVS. But there was a change to my tretinoin this year. I am still using tretinoin. I'm just getting it in a different way. So in, I do still use this, and I'll explain that in a second. But for my face, the tretinoin that I'm currently using is from Curology. And Curology is an online service where you can get prescription tretinoin mixed with a couple of other ingredients, and they ship it directly directly to your house. You interact with a skincare provider who works up an individual formula for you. Whether you have acne or whether you have wrinkles, they will help you with your skin. It's roughly the same concentration. This one that I was using is the 0.1%. This one has 0.09%, so it has one tenth of a percent less. So what we have in here is 1% clindamycin and also 5% azaleic acid. I love this because they were able to help me really solve my acne. My skin is so clear. So I'm putting this on every night of the week, all over my face. You know, I put it right up under here because, as I said, I've been using it for five years. My skin is acclimated. And then once a week, I put it on my neck. Not a lot, just the residue from my face. I just spread it down onto my neck, and that's been great. And then every night, I put on, like, a pea-sized amount of this on my finger. I go blap, blap, blap on my chest, and then backs of my hands. Then the next step on the other six nights when I don't use the Curology on my neck is to use an over-the-counter retinoid for my neck. The one that I've been using is a Ven. This is the Retronol 0.1 Intensive Cream. This contains retinaldehyde, which is an over-the-counter retinoid, but it's stronger than retinol because it doesn't need to be converted by your skin using two steps. It's just a one-step conversion away from being um, all transretinoic acid, which is what tretinoin is. So that makes this less effective, but also less irritating. So this is what I'm using on my neck. I use it every night. I just do one pump of this, rub it all over my neck. Before this, I was using the CeraVe Skin Renewing Cream Serum. I still love this. This one isn't quite empty, so I kind of alternate with these guys, but I'm kind of phasing this out, and I'm going more for this one now. In the past, I had used the Neutrogena Rapid Wrinkle Repair, and so if you're using that, you would put that on then. Or if you're using just an over-the-counter retinoid instead of a prescription retinoid, you would just take whichever one that is and put that all over your face, neck, chest, and backs of hands at that step. You'll notice in this case, this is a thicker cream and I'm applying it first, but it is the most important um, thing, so that's why it goes on first. And then my next step is a lighter weight serum, but that's okay because I love the like slip that I get from this and I feel like I get a little bit of a smear of the tretinoin from under my eyes up onto my eyelids because I don't put it directly there. I know some people do, but I don't. So this is the Timeless Matrixyl Synth 6 Serum, and this contains Matrixyl Synth 6 along with hyaluronic acid, and it's nice and moisturizing, so I just take like three or four, maybe five drops of this onto my fingertips. That goes everywhere, including eyelids and lips, and down my neck, chest, backs, and hands. Then the next serum that I put on is from The Ordinary. It is their Resveratrol 3% plus Ferulic Acid 3%. This one I had tried back over the winter. My neck became so irritated from using this, I had to stop. So now, I do use this, but just on my face. I don't put it on my neck. Resveratrol and Ferulic Acid are antioxidants. So again, now you're getting another boost of antioxidants to fight those free radicals. And then for my last Last step in the evening, I put on a moisturizer. The one that I've been using for years is the Olay Regenerist Micro Sculpting Cream, the fragrance-free version. I really love this, but in the summer, it's a little heavy. It is a you know, thick white cream, but I love it because it contains niacinamide and it also has another peptide in it, so, and glycerin. So I like things that have like a couple of anti-aging actives in them. So if this is feeling a little bit heavy for the summer, I pretty much will just swap in the CeraVe PM because they are very similar ingredients wise. They both contain niacinamide, hyaluronic acid, glycerin, where this one has the ceramides, this one has a peptide pretty much an even swap, and this one is much more lightweight. Uh, as I mentioned, my neck is so super sensitive, and the cream that has been helping my neck to 
stay not red and not irritated and not 20 years older looking is La Roche-Posay Cicaplast Balm B5. This one was brought to my attention by a viewer who wrote in about it and oh my gosh I ran out and bought it and do I love this. Since I've been using this I've been able to as I said use my prescription retinoid on my neck once a week without any irritation. I'm hoping that I can build it up to maybe like every other day. Oh my gosh is that too much to ask for? <laughs> um, that would be great. It contains shea butter and panthenol so it's very moisturizing but it also contains a couple of other ingredients that are really soothing to the skin um, so it really helps to soothe any kind of inflamed red irritated skin so if you're trying to get used to using a retinoid this can really help so give that a try and then um, one specialty product that I use once a week on like Sunday night I do my Sunday night face ritual is I'm still using the drunk elephant TLC Sukari baby facial I really like this for like a once a week glycolic acid peel and it really helps to make my pores look smaller and then I don't do the rest of my uh, normal skincare routine that night so I don't put on my retin-a I just put on a nice moisturizer with it it comes with like an oil and on nights that I use this I do use the more hydrating Olay uh, Regenerous Micro Sculpting Cream so how's that for trying to keep the video short <laughs> still long wasn't it you know me I can talk about skincare it is my favorite topic there's my entire skincare routine in a nutshell for you in case you wanted to try it out for yourself um, none of the products are terribly expensive although you know I know that they do add up once you buy them all you know I try to keep it at a reasonable price point so that it's affordable this is what works for me I hope if you've tried it that it's worked for you I love hearing from you guys when you tell me that my skincare routine has changed your life for the better that people get you compliments on the street it just is so gratifying it makes me so happy so I hope you found the video helpful and informative if you did give it a like and subscribe to my channel you can also hit that little bell down there if you haven't already so that you can get notifications whenever I upload a video so thanks for watching everybody you know I always really appreciate your time so have a great day and I will see you in the next video take care everybody bye, -bye.